Welcome to this quick tour tutorial of SDL Trader Studio 2014. In this video we would like to show you how to translate a document, but we'd also like to show you some of the other key innovative features in this application. First of all, let's take a look at the main areas of the application. Right here we are seeing the welcome view, which has a few tabs with information and allowing you to get started with the translations. So first of all, you can see the home tab here, which allows you to access the most frequent use cases in the application. You can create a new project, you can translate a single document, which is what we will do later in the tutorial. You can also plug into translation supply chains by opening a package or by opening an online group share project. On the Get Started tab, you get quite a few videos to get started with Studio, both on Studio but also on Multiterm, the terminology management application included with uh, Studio, and also some What's New videos, and finally also PDF guides, which help you to get started with Studio, both from a translation review perspective, but also project management and TM management. The More Resources tab gives you some useful further links to the Release Notes Help System Migration Guide if you are coming from Trados 2007 and also access to the SDL Open Exchange website, which is quite useful by the way because it gives you additional apps and content for Studio and Multiterm, so it's quite interesting to extend the functionality of the product. And finally, to keep updated with what's happening in Studio and other SDL products, check the latest news tab which always gives you the latest news from SDL. Let's now go back to the home tab and let's take a look at the other areas here on the left hand side of Studio. The projects view always gives you access to the most required project management related functionality. So it shows you the current status of your project, it shows you some of the analysis statistics, so you have uh, quite a nice high level overview of your projects. The Files view then uh, shows you individual files within projects. So I'm currently opening the sample project included with Studio and this has five documents which you can translate and take a look at. You have here the different target languages that a project might go into, so in this case three target languages. And you get lots of other useful information, again analysis statistics, confirmation statistics and so on. The reports view gives you nice reports with very detailed statistics on the pre-translation or analysis of your projects. So if we go to German here, you have a very long uh, project report here on the analysis results of the project. You can also save projects in different formats from here, for example Excel, so that you can work with budgeting your projects in Excel or other applications. The next view here is the editor view. This is obviously the area where the actual translation happens and I've opened a sample file. We will take a closer look at this later, but you can see here the translation memory window, the terminology area where terminology results will appear. And what is also very nice is here to take a look at the ribbon up here. The ribbon has all the functionality grouped into different tabs that give you access to the most frequent functionality. So on the Home tab here you have access to the translation related tasks. On the Review tab you have access to review related commands. The Advanced tab then gives you access to a bit more rarely used commands that you might find useful. The View tab gives you access to lots of different view functionality that you can change and adapt to your needs. The Add-ins tab has access to future extensions around Studio. And finally the Help tab gives you access to all kinds of help related resources, tutorials on our YouTube channel, the SDN knowledge base and some other useful resources. Finally, the Translation Memories view gives you access to translation memory management related functionality. So in this case I've already opened a translation memory, which you can then edit in a lot of different ways. You can correct any mistakes, you can even do a batch edit where you go through and uh, globally find and replace content in the translation memory. Lots of other functionality related to managing and keeping translation memories up to date and in the best shape. Let's now go back to the welcome view to get started with your translation, as promised at the beginning of this tutorial. So you have two main commands to start translation, the new project command that allows you to set up a project with different resources like your documents, your translation memories, your term bases and so on. For the purposes of this tutorial we will use the translate single document command which just allows us to open a single document and translate it to one single target language. 
Concretely, we will translate a Microsoft Word document from English into German. I'm clicking the Translate Single Document command, then I'm selecting the document I want to translate, click Open. Then I'm faced with the language pair choice. I'm going from English United States to German Germany and I'm also asked to specify the translation memory that I want to use. In my case I already have a translation memory which I want to specify so I click Add File Based Translation Memory and I'm selecting this English German translation memory here. Click OK. As you can see we have been moved automatically to the editor view where I can now start the translation. First of all though, let's reduce the left-hand side here a bit, which you can easily do. The translation environment is completely customizable, so you've got lots of choices to adapt the environment to your needs, and this just gives us a little bit more space for editing. Another nice feature is the real-time preview feature, which is hidden behind the preview tab here. What's quite nice is that I can make the preview permanently visible by disabling the auto hide feature here and this then allows me to always have a constant look at the look and feel of my document by basically creating the initial preview and then being able to even zoom in if I wanted to or go back to the fit to width command and this then just allows me to check the layout of the document as I will translate it. You can see that the document already shows me a translation memory result here from this area but what I have not yet added is an auto-suggest dictionary and a term base. So let's do that first so that it will help me during translation. I'm going to the project settings command for this. I'm going to my language pair which is English to German and here I've got the auto-suggest dictionary choice. I can click add and simply select the auto-suggest dictionary like this. And then I can also open a term base additionally and I just click here on the project term base settings button, click add and also specify a term base. The term base is created in multi-term which is a separate application included with Studio. You also have very nice open exchange apps that can help you to create term bases fast. So in my case I just pick this particular term base and I'm now ready to start translating with a translation memory, with an auto-suggest dictionary and with a term base in the background. Alright, so we're now really ready to start the translation and you can see that the first segment actually has already been translated because it has been found in the translation memory that I have specified. So I can simply confirm this segment and go to the next one. This is the confirm button here which I can use. You can also use the control enter keyboard command. So in the second sentence here, the translation memory has found what is referred to as a fuzzy match, 91% in this case. So if you take a look here in the translation memory area, you will see that a word has been added to my source document, which I now need to reflect in the target language. So I need to type the translation for suitable. And when I start typing, you can see that the auto-suggest dictionary that I've added earlier now helps me to complete my translation much faster because it already gives me a suggestion here, geeigneten, which is exactly what I need. So I can add it to the translation proposal and I have now completed my second translation. Before we go to the third segment though, you can see also a red bracket here, photo printer with a red bracket. This means that this has been found as a term in the term base that I'm using and we will look at that functionality a little bit later. I will now confirm the segment and go to the third one. Here I don't have any match from the translation memory, but my auto-suggest dictionary will help me to complete this translation. So as soon as I type, suggestions appear, and I can just pick the ones that make most sense in my current context. Auto-suggest will um, suggest suggestions from the translation memory, term base, or from auto-text lists that you might want to create. So I'm continuing. Und stellen Sie ihn an einem trockenen Ort auf, der keiner direkten Sonneneinstrahlung ausgesetzt ist. You can also see that I can correct typing mistakes, which I made here, just by right-clicking on the word and then uh, selecting the right s spelling here. Let's now use Quick Place to transfer the formatting in the source segment to my target translation. The way you do this is that you select the corresponding text, 
then press control comma and then this will give you the list of formatting suggestions from the source text that you can apply to the target just press enter and you will transfer the formatting instantly same for the second one which I can transfer like this so that completes the translation of the third segment and I will press control enter again to confirm so again I can start typing the translation and now I'm ready to place the number in the source segment and this uh, works in the same way as with formatting you press control comma and select the number like this alright this completes my fourth segment and again I will confirm with control enter the next segments come from the translation memory actually so I don't need to do anything and can continue with segment number nine in segment number nine again I get an author suggestion and press control enter but I want to highlight something here with this particular segment you can see that it is repeated in segment number 14 and when I now press control enter see what happens the segment number 14 gets automatically translated as well because it is a repetition of segment number 9 and this functionality is actually called auto propagation and this is the auto propagate feature that now helps me translate faster when it comes to repetitions I can now continue with my translation again I get quite a few auto suggestions Netzteil, das im Lieferumfang des Druckers enthalten ist and then I confirm again and again the next segments come from the translation memory and I simply now just translate the final segment here okay this is my final sentence here that I need to translate and I will again get um, quite a few auto suggestions alright this completes my translation although I get an error here which I still need to correct so I do that with just right clicking and that's it for this particular translation so I'm done but before we save the translation let's look at a couple of additional features such as adding terminology and how to run a QA check okay let's first add a new term to the term base and we can best do this in segment number 17 here and why not add power outlet together with Stromversorgung into the term base so you can basically select the source and target term simply click add new term and this then opens the term base viewer here in the left hand area of studio where you can already see the term being added you can now edit the term entry as much as you would like so you can add a definition or source or whatever you might like to add as metadata to your terminology or simply save which I do in my case I save the entry go back to studio and you can now see that power outlet is now also recognized as a known term and has a red bracket so the terms are immediately available for use finally let's run a quality assurance check on this document this is best done by going to review and then clicking this small button here to open the settings for the verification you can go to the QA checker here and select lots of different options that help you check the translation formally in terms of inconsistencies punctuation lots of different checks are available number check of course as well so once you're happy with the settings click OK and click the verify button and this then brings a list of issues that the verifier has found in this case just one segment is highlighted as being a bit too long according to the settings that I've used for the quality assurance check alright I'm now done and it's time to save my document to do that I go to the file tab and basically first of all can say save this actually saves the bilingual version of the document so the source and target document together as one working document and to save the target document I say save target as and here I would probably say something like German sample photo printer document click save and if I want to take a look at the target file I can also click the preview button here which opens up the translated file in Microsoft Word and I can see that the document has been fully translated and I can deliver it back to my customer that has ordered this translation all right there we have it a brief introduction to some of the innovative and key features in SDL Trader Studio we hope you enjoyed the quick tour and never forget enjoy translation thanks a lot